Okay, hello and welcome back to Zoic TV. This is going to be a quick cloth tutorial. First, about five minutes is going to be going through the cloth basic settings. Then, hopefully, that how long it takes after that will be um, all going through rigging, uh, working with the cloth and the rig at the same time, so you can get effects like if you've got a long coat and you want the bottom of the coat to wrap around the legs as if it were an actual long coat. That's what my tutorial is going to show you. But the uh, it's got many uses, such as a headband maybe. It's got a bit hanging down, you want that to work and things like that. So that's the kind of thing that we're going to look at in this video. And we're going to move on straight on to the basic settings with this. Let's check where I am already. I'm a minute in. I'm hoping to make it quite quick and we're going to go through the basic settings of cloth. So add a mesh plane, drag that up on the z-axis, hoping you know how to do all this. I'm going to scale it just a little bit and I'm going to move it to the x-axis a little bit so it slides off. And I'm going to add smooth shading to this. So let's click on, on the left here, flat and smooth under shading. I'm going to click on smooth and that will smooth the shading off so that it makes it look like it's a maybe a bowling ball or something, or just a, a real ball rather than made up faces. And we're also going to, just to set up the scene, go into edit mode on this, plane, and go on under add on the same settings where the um, smooth modifier was. Go to add and subdivide. So subdivide, you've got a new little menu down here, and I'm going to bring that up to eight cuts. That's all been done on the left, and the number of cuts has been changed to eight. Hopefully that's all pretty basic stuff, I mean that's the same for everything, it all appears like that, so I'm hoping you follow me so far. And you don't even need to follow this tutorial, it's a bit of knowledge towards this area. And um, the more the more subdivides that you add here, so you could go and add like 20 or something like that and make really tiny cubes on here, uh, the higher quality that your effect's going to be but it's also going to slow down your computer and it's going to slow down the rendering time and everything like that so 8 is a good number, uh, it works quite well and, it worked, and it's good enough for just a quick animation so if you really wanted to just get started and you clicked on this on your plane go into the physics panel and click cloth you could keep all these settings the same and press play uh, and right now it's not playing, it's not even caching or pre-rendering or whatever you want to call it here at the bottom, that's because uh, for some reason when you press play at the start it doesn't do that so go to the end and get it to play again in a loop and it then will start playing and this blue line indicates that it's actually doing something if the blue line isn't coming up in a solid colour then it's not doing anything and you just got to go to the end, press play and let it loop round so the basic effect fall just makes it fall forever uh, and that's right because it's not got anything to collide with you'd think it would collide with this but that's because you haven't had a collision modified to that so I'm going to pause it take it back to the start click on the sphere and add collision in the same physics area this setting you can keep exactly the same, it's good enough, it's all fine. Uh, maybe look at another tutorial for some more advanced settings in that area. As I say, I'm going through the quick basic settings. And right now we can already press play again. If I select my... Uh, you got to select the plane to see the blue line. Press play, yep, it's rendering it, whatever. The blue line's coming up. And we've seen that it's just bounced straight off. So, basic effect, quite good. Uh, Apart from, we've got it in flat shading, that makes every face flat and have its own light effect on it, but we want that smooth, makes it look a lot better. Let's press play, and there we go. That's just a very basic effect. And then, if you click on the plane, you'll realise that on the right here, you've got some pre-made effects. They can pretty much cover any kind of material that you want. Silk for anything like a headband, uh, rubber for anything that's a bit more like springy and 
like still but still thin or whatever. So rubber, really. Um, leather for mostly leather, but otherwise any material that's kind of stiff and isn't going. And I'll just press play to show you that that's what it actually does. So I press play. It's not really bending. It's just um, it's kind of staying stiff and it's kind of rigid. So that's how and that it's all been changed and then go on to denim so that's pretty much your basic one denim would be for clothes and that gives a nice effect all again very slightly different and the best way to learn how to make these different effects would be to look at them look at all of their settings switch to like silk from leather and see that the spring has changed to zero from 25 and things like that and uh, see what has happened to the air and things and so on. Uh, it's really basic if you understand with the words that are already there then you'll be able to understand how and just mess around with it and you get it all. So let's see how far we are. Okay six minutes in and I'm going to move on to pinning. So we've already got this basic effect and it's on silk so I'm going to press play. This is our current result. And you may want this to be pinned from like a flagpole or something, let's say you want a flag to be waving in the wind. You're going to want it to be sticking to that thing as if it were actually there. So I'm going to pretend it is a flagpole. I'm going to rotate on the X by 90. And I'm going to go into edit mode. So what we're going to do is pretend it's pinned from those two points there. And you're going to want to select them in edit mode and go to this little groups object data thing here, a uh, little triangle that's upside down, and go into your vertex groups. So I'm just going to close everything else off just so you know which one it is. Vertex groups there, and press add. So right now, we've added the vertex group. I'm going to press assign, just to make sure that it is assigned to those two vertices. And if you're not sure, deselect everything with A, and then click select when you select on your group and it should select the two vertices you want and that's already good enough, you don't need to change anything there um, you just need to go into your cloth settings on the plane preferably in object mode click pinning, it's in the basic cloth data settings and go to your group on this little menu, drop down menu here and keep the stiffness the same and everything, it will already be good enough so press play and we can see that it's now hanging from those two points it's not it's not fallen like it should have, should have done before and then you can add some basic um, what are they called force fields and things to make it blow in the wind and things like that but right now I've lost connection with my mouse okay sorry about that In fact, I'm gonna, and then so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new scene. You wouldn't have this scene in your own. This is the character that I made. I'm just going to delete, change some few settings here. So I'll probably speed this up so in a sec. Select the clothing first, then select the bone in object mode and press control P I'm just going to click armature to form I'm not going to do automatic weights because I'm going to do my own weight and I'm going to go into pose mode on that I'm going to go into weight paint mode on that and I'm going to press 1 for the front view and now I'm going to change strength full and radius so this is why I want you to have prior knowledge of all this because you're moving on to pinning rather than knowing how to weight paint. I'm just going to colour all that in red. So you should know what red does. If you don't, then check out another tutorial. Because if you have been just moving on to um, straight onto this tutorial from not doing any rigging before, then you're not going to be able to pin your stuff in the first place. 
So it's pretty much worth going to check that out before this. Uh, a bit late to start now, but I'm just killing some time while I wait for this in. Okay. So I'm doing some really basic settings there, it's all done like that. And I'm gonna go into object mode. Take that into object mode as well. And we'll see that now in my groups on this, if I go into groups, it's now got a, a group called top. And remember that was the name of my bone. So we can just assume and we, we already know that that is the group made by the top. So any vertices that you just white painted have been put into that group and we can go straight into the, the settings here, apply cloth, apply pinning, and it's in silk and whatever, uh, whatever settings you have, apply pinning, and apply it to the top group, which I just white painted. Keep the stiffness the same, same just like I showed you before and then press play. Of course, wait for it to get to the end or whatever, I'll skip to the end. And now we can see the bottom part there folded in a little bit. And just to prove that it is in fact working properly, I'm gonna add a mesh UV sphere, drag that over there, scale it down a little bit. And I'm going to add a collision to it. I'm also going to animate it. Don't expect you to know how to do all this, I'm just showing you that it proves that it is. Okay, um, that's the animation. Now I just click on this and press pl Ooh, not backwards, forwards. And now when the ball goes through it, it's knocked it to the side. And that's pretty much what you'll want from this effect. So that it has knocked it, and if I had legs in there, they would they would move it if I had applied the uh, collision modifier. And that's where I'm going to end the tutorial. I hope you found it useful. I maybe didn't explain everything properly, uh, but I'm still beginning on the tutorials, and this was actually a suggestion towards the tutorials. So subscribe and post in the comments on any tutorials that you'd like to see. I will get around to them, but when I'll get around to them, I don't know. So it's always worth subscribing and I'll try and get around to them as soon as I can. So I guess I'll see you in the next video. Bye.